Hi there. In this video, I'm going to show you how to configure project server security within Project Online. So what I mean by that, project server security mode, project online security mode, as opposed to SharePoint security mode within Project Online using groups and categories. So getting that very uh, granular security within Project Online for your different user groups. All right. So how do we do this? Well, the very first thing we'll need to do is to go to additional server settings. And in here, you can switch out to project permission mode. This switches it from SharePoint where we have very, you know, broad security to a more finite and granular security mode that'll actually allow us to set up very very specific permissions for specific users within project online i highly recommend it i, I configured project online and set it up for you know countless companies and i never used the sharepoint security mode once you've done that you'll see that the security section here pops up within project online so the very first thing you want to do is think about who is going to be using project online and how they're going to be using project online that's a whole different debate and a, a definitely a conversation that you want to have with your peers get some consulting help potentially but if you want to have a good stab at this on your own I'm going to show you the basics in here so I'm sure that's what you're trying to do so groups and categories the groups is what you can do within project online as an end user so you can click in here and see the groups out of the box these are the groups that you have and they're all available straight away default to assigned people right so if I click on project managers most people can I understand what that is and you can see all the permissions that project managers have down here that's the global permissions all right if I scroll up I can see that category permissions so there's three different categories here out of the box for project managers groups so organization so for all projects for my projects and for my tasks on various projects potentially as a team member as opposed to a project manager those are what those categories mean so let me break it down in an easy way because that's complicated so if we go back in fact I'm going to go back and back again the groups in project online are the kind of high level permissions what somebody can and cannot do the categories are what they can and cannot do to projects resources and tasks right so they can do it to this project but they can't do it to that project so the security is managed in two ways groups and categories so what I'm going to do is create a group and the first thing I do is I'll create my own custom security right one to one group to category it keeps it really simple I'm going to create a custom category for my custom group I'm not going to have three different categories. I can have more than one category, but I'm going to create custom each time. So for example, for project managers, I'm going to make some assumptions around what they can do, but I'm also going to say that they can edit their own projects, but see everyone else's projects, something like that. In that case, you'd need two categories. Anyway, let's create one. So I'm going to create new group. Again, I don't touch the out of the box stuff, leave that as it is. You don't want to kick anyone out of the system right now. If people were using it uh, in SharePoint security mode, they'd all be kicked out right now because we switched the mode. We'd have to add them to our new group. So it's a good idea to do this at the weekend. Uh, or, yeah, just do it at the weekend. <laughs> so I'm going to call this, um, you know, let's say I work for a, a company and this is my company's uh, project manager group. All right, so I work for Microsoft and we go MS. And I'm going to call this project managers all right and who does it I want to add this to well I can actually synchronize this with an active directory group so if you've got ADFS set up you can synchronize this with an ADFS group so that when you want a project manager to be in project online you just give them that group and then boom they'll be put in here failing that which nine times out of ten you should not you should definitely use that active directory synchronization um, you can just add them in manually. So Tom Henry is going to be a project manager, for example. The categories, we'll leave those for now, but you can add your custom categories and we'll come back and make some changes later. 
So these are the category permissions for the group. Ignore that. Come down to global permissions. What do you want them to be able to do within the system? Now this is a lot of information here. <laughs> Let me tell you the basics. So allow will allow them to do it. Deny will say they definitely cannot do it, regardless of whether somewhere else in Project Online they've been allowed to do it. It's a hard deny. If you leave it neither allow nor deny, they will not be able to do it. They're not allowed, but they're not disallowed from being authorized to do that in another group. All right, that makes sense. So if you have more than one group that a particular resource is assigned to, say they're an administrator, and they're allowed as an administrator, but they're denied here, that deny would take precedence. So I've never checked the deny box for all intents and purposes. I have, but we're not going to do that today. Um, all right, so you know to make this really easy, let's use a template. All right, so we have templates for project managers. This is a good starting point. All right, apply that template. And I should see the permissions for a project manager. Oh, Yep, there it is. I clicked apply and now it's just gone in and done that. But then I make my changes as I like. So all these admin features, do you want the project managers to be doing these? Probably not. All right, you don't want them to be, you could add them. Let's say they want to manage views. I've got videos on that if you're interested. Manage enterprise calendars. Probably not, but maybe. All right, you can add them and allow them to do those things. Access project server reporting services. Do you want them to be able to report, check on reports? Probably. Do you want them to be able to contribute to a project web app? Now, this gets into some complex stuff. This is not, it doesn't have a link where you can click on it. <laughs> and say, what does that mean? Right? It could mean anything. First of all, I'd recommend you buy one of the books, I actually, um, uh, I'd recommend, um, there's a, a book from Progility. They have a configuring and administrating project online book. Great book. I know the authors help with some of the stuff in the background of that. Yeah, that's the book to read. Or you can actually read this uh, on, on the um, Microsoft website. We have this thing for Global Permissions for Project Server 2013. You can Google this or you can see the link at the top of the screen. In fact, I will put that in the uh, description of this video. But here it says Project Server 2013. It's just because it was never updated. Right? At Microsoft, I think they made the assumption that when they allowed SharePoint security mode in 2013, that everyone would go with that. But most people wanted to revert back. In fact, everybody wanted to revert back. But you know, it is what it is. Politics. But um, this is the correct thing. Project Server 2013 permissions. In fact, you know, if you're looking at the documentation, this is around Project Online. This was updated in 2021, right? But so just take my word for it that this is good, right? So here we can see all of the global permissions and what they mean, right? So for example. Contribute to project web app. That could mean a lot of different things, right? Let's scroll down and we'll find contribute to project web app. This is all the admin stuff, right? Still admin stuff. Is it? All right, let's search it. There we go. Contribute to project web app allows a user to edit items within list within project web app root site. So what it allows them to do is some admin features that you definitely don't want them to do. <laughs> they can actually, I think, if they have contribute web app, they can change the um, the, the theme <laughs> for Project Online. I've seen a couple companies do that. So do not allow them to do that. So you're not going to allow them, and they don't have that access. Access the reporting service is great. Log on from Project Professional. Do you want them to be able to use Project Professional? Yes, you do, definitely. Manage the lists in Project Web App. Mm, maybe not, right? Uh, new task assignments, reassign tasks. I can't tell you exactly. I could go into all these permissions. I do know them very well. What I'd recommend you do is for each one, understand them, read about it, and decide whether that's something you want your organization to be doing for project managers. Simple as that. I've given you the tools. I've explained how it works. I would recommend you just come through and check, 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 uncheck, 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 uncheck. I'm not going to give you any more specifics other than go and read this blog, which I will put, and that's an updated information from time to time. All right, so we've got a, a group created. Now I'm going to create the category for this group. So we can see we have the out of the box ones. I'm going to create a custom category. I'm going to come back here and review it. 
this is the order I do it as well group then category and you'll see why it's very finicky so I'm going to save this group MS project managers there it is I can give it a description if I wanted to um, and then you can also synchronize about to directory once you've got that active directory group in here you can synchronize it and you can see when it was last synchronized important information um, all right so let's go back to the manage categories now groups and categories groups is what I can do categories is to what I can do this on from a project resource and task perspective new category I'm going to call this MS project managers Give it a description custom cat for P, uh, MSPM. All right, whatever you like. Um, all right, so <laughs> here we go. Do you want this for project managers, right? Do you want them to be able to see all current and future projects or only the selected projects? So I'm going to say that they can only they can see all, right? But if I want to go with only, this is the more complex version, right? Only include your selected projects. And I'm not going to select any, but I'm going to come down here and do dynamic stuff, right? So only allow them to see, don't worry about this, because it says additionally dynamically include projects in this category where. So I never do the top bit, I always do the bottom bit. The user is the project owner or the status manager on assignments with my project. So if they were ever the project manager or if they are the status manager on some tasks within that project. Basically, when you create a project in Project Online, you are the status manager for every task. If you then change the owner of that project to somebody else and they don't come in and switch out the status manager column in Microsoft Project, you may on you may continue to be receiving timesheet updates for those particular tasks. So when you switch ownership of a project, you need to switch out the status manager. Complex stuff, not for this particular video, but that's what that's there for. Now the user is on that project's project team. So if I'm a project manager and I'm on a project team, do I want to be able to do that project? No, I don't. Right? If I'm a, a resource on somebody's project team, for this particular category, I don't want them to be able to do the things that I've allowed them to do in the group. <laughs> I know that sounds complicated. The project owner or status manager on assignments within that project is a descendant by RBS. So we have the option to create a resource breakdown structure within Project Online. It's very complex, part of security. I'm not going to get into it in this video. Please comment on this video if you want me to show you that, but, and I will create that video, but very rarely do we create a resource breakdown structure. Essentially, it's the hierarchy within the organization. If you want your subordinates, like I'm a manager of five people, let's say, I want to be able to do everything on their projects. But if, I'm, if there's another project, uh, if there's another manager, I don't need to be accessing and changing their project team members projects right so I can edit all of my team's projects but not somebody else's that's an RBS structure you build out the structure of your organization what resources do you want them to be able to manipulate I was going or include all current and future resources uh, you want them to be able to assign resources but if you want to get more granular you can like allow them to see resources on a particular team but not the others but I allow them to see everything and then they can just select the right one that they want makes it really easy all right what views do you want this category permissions to apply to <laughs> right so I always say all views right this applies to all views they can do everything in all the views however right you might want to restrict certain views you can get granular with it you can say I don't want them to be able to do anything in the project center or see the projects in the project center but they could do more with the resources in the resource center if they're a resource manager for example all right so these permissions that I'm allowing are for these projects in these views right and these tasks and these resources in these views so it's applicable to these views that I've checked if I don't check that it does not do anything this category is null and void now permissions <laughs> complicated isn't it all right MS project managers so this will kind of now go into my group and assign this category to this group just so you know all right and then I click on it and now I can say what do I want to do for this particular category what do I want to allow them to do right accept task updates and requests yep 
build the team on the project yep right deliverable and legacy item links again this is complicated you'll want to come in here and click on category permissions for project server 2013 here is all of that information create deliverable and legacy link items it allows a user to create modify or delete links between project tasks and items in the project site documents issues deliverables and risks essentially what that allows you to do is link this particular task to a project or to a risk within the SharePoint site for this particular project yeah why not in fact you can come in here and do a project manager apply and it's going to give me some what what should generally what's the rule of thumb for most organizations and then I can pair back from there you do not want people to be deleting projects right that's an administrative feature because they might accidentally delete a project that they own and they're like where's my project well that's gone sorry <laughs> just don't let them delete them they're enterprise projects they're important do not let them delete them um, open projects published you want them to be able to resource plans I'm not going to get into the granular settings because I could talk for many many hours on that read the documentation it won't take you long um, and then this is some stuff on the resources do you want them to adjust timesheets for resources probably not approved timesheets uh, yep probably if they're going to be doing that assign resource yep uh, edit enterprise resource data yep uh, actually probably not edit the enterprise resources but the data no we don't want that Man delegates and engagements yes so I'm not again I'm not going to get into the categories but Microsoft project out of the box it assumes that there's a resource manager role so it doesn't give project managers resource managers permissions very readily but in most cases in my opinion most project managers do the resource management as well unless you're in a matrix organization where you have resource uh, project managers uh, resource managers and project managers independently of each other that'd be a nice save it my category is now created so now I have permissions set up for groups if I come back to my group I'm going to come back in and take a look at my MS project managers see the name of the group I can see the category you can see it's actually dynamically put it in if you want to adjust it you can adjust it in here too I always adjust the category in the category because there's so much more there's a few extra things that you can do in there and which views as it is it applicable to things like that but if you want to adjust it here make sure you click on it <laughs> if I'm clicked over here it means nothing right but when I first came in here I clicked it and then I can adjust right and if there's more than one category maybe if you have it so that you can edit all your projects but see other people's projects you could create another category that would allow you to see others people's stuff but not have any editing permissions within the category so you can get very granular with your security all right that's the basics of security please like and comment and let me know if there's any feedback on this video it's a complicated subject um, again read the documentation if all else fails, give me a shout or get yourself a consultant partner. Thanks so much and I hope you like it. Please subscribe for more Project Online administrative tips and tricks.